I am doing another laser coaching session with one of our Rank Maker Live ticket holders. I'm super excited about our guest. Uh, last night I posted in the Rank Maker Live ticket holder group. I said, hey, uh, who would like to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching? And uh, quite a few people responded. And I liked I liked this person's question, so I wanted to dive into it. Jamie, how are you? I'm so great, Ray. Thanks for having me. She had uh, she had her yoga lesson in today, so she's feeling quite zen. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and uh, so, tell us how how did you get into uh, network marketing? And, and so that's question one. Let's stick there. How'd you get into network marketing? Okay, before I answer your question, I just want to say Rank Makers Live is life changing. I was there Aww. last year, the year before. And Aww. the part that's so special is that you have so many different amazing speakers. So if one person mm -hmm. is not like, oh, for you, five more are going to be <laughs> like literally you over deliver. You know, that saying under promise and over deliver. Yeah. You over, you and Jess just pour into everyone Aww. and over deliver and it's just an amazing experience so i want to say thank you oh thank you that's so right? kind that's so awesome um, thank you i yes. appreciate it yes it's true though um so the way i got into network marketing was i was working in corporate america I was married, I had a baby, and I was like, there's got to be another way. You know, I, I'm a hard worker and I need to make money for myself. I had never really known very much about the industry, um, but I jumped in and was like, Zoom. You know, I was like, how fast can I match my corporate income and get home with my baby? Because I hated leaving her. And uh, that was 29 years ago and four children. So I was able to raise all of my children and be home and earn a substantial income for years and years and years. Wow. And grow, that, grow like, you know, I mean. That's amazing. So yeah. Who, um, I'm, I'm curious, was it a friend who introduced you or like, how did you find out about it? <laughs> This is so funny because no, it was not a friend. Some girl put an ad in a paper and I was the only one that answered. And wow. so the bad news for that was I thought that that's how you built a business. Yeah. And so I really struggled with how to, you know, in the beginning catch fire because I thought, well, that's what you do since that's how I came in. So yeah. I had a huge learning curve. Um, but I was just undeterred. I was like, I'm getting home no matter what it takes. Nice. That's so, that's so amazing. That's so cool. Um, that's really cool. And uh, so your question was, um, Hey, cause you've been in the same company this whole time, the right? Same 29 years. Company. That's, that's have, impressive. Yes. For 29 years. Like I'm like, I started network marketing when there was like horse and carriage. Okay. <laughs> When there was nice. no internet, okay. All when the brochures was... were black and white. <laughs> That's awesome. Like we would have to call and say, did Mary order? Like that yeah. was the only way we knew how much was wow. in our, like how to promote. Okay. We had That's a call. Awesome. We had fax rolls coming in. It was nice. the wild west. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So what was the question? Because I don't, I don't want to mess it up. What, what was the question you asked last night? Okay, so my question was, so after 29 years of being in the same company and growing and doing the same thing, like, how do you keep that fire going? How do you keep that excitement? Um, because I'm long past the place of, do you need some extra money? Do you, even though that's where I was, like, I wanted to match my corporate income and get out of Dodge. Sure. Right. So I'm my, I'm so far away removed from that. Yeah. that I, I sometimes think people can't necessarily relate to me because they're like, oh, you've always been that like that successful. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so it's safe to say you've been financially free for the most part for a while. Yes. Yes. I mean, I was married for a long time and yeah. we're financially solid. Um but I know I came for a bigger purpose. I know I came yeah. to touch a lot more lives and I'm feeling like this, like my business yeah. is like this and I'm like this. Yeah. For a year, All right. like three years <clears throat> now, four years now, same place, exact same income, everything, same, same. Yeah. So I heard, so I'll share a, I'll share a quick story with you and then, you know, let's see if we can help you here. Um, 
So a, f- a friend of mine, a uh, gentleman named Russell Bronson, he, he co-founded ClickFunnels. He's, I mean, he's one of the smartest marketers that I know. Feel free to tag him if, you, if, you're, if someone on here is friends with him. Um, I just spent some time with him uh, maybe a month ago or something like that. And, uh, you know, he, he had a really, really big offer for someone to buy his company, like a really insane, unbelievable number that uh, someone offered him to purchase, you know, ClickFunnels from him. And he asked, um, you know, because he's close friends with Tony Robbins, and he asked Tony Robbins, he said, hey, man, you know, do you think I should sell? Because it's like, it'd be such a cool, you know, milestone to sell my company for this amount, which is this ridiculous amount. Um, and, you know, to be honest, I'm kind of sick of being the CEO because at that time he, he was and being, you know, he, he likes marketing. He's a marketing nerd and he would say that. Right. So he loves the marketing nitty gritty, hates the management of people and stuff. He just doesn't like that. And so Tony, um, gave him some really, really good wisdom. And, and that is if you sold your company without a without your next purpose, you would be miserable. And, right. and the reason I say that is because we have to always be creating a next purpose. We have to always be looking at what is our next target. Um, and that doesn't mean income. Like for me, it actually, I, you know, I meditate every day, as you probably know, right? Um, yeah, I Dr. talk about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and so like, I remember when I first got serious about meditation and I would, you know, so there's a, there's a couple ways he says it. So he says like, you know, see your future self. Um, and then the other one is use your heart as a magnet, draw it to you. And so for a while I would think about money and I would think about, you know, bank account and, and this and that, and this and that. And, and I was missing a key ingredient and that was emotion. I just, I just couldn't get emotional over that stuff. But when I started thinking about impact, when I started thinking about building schools and, you know, right now we're working on um, funding a hazard house, um, which will be here in our area, that'll be the middle ground for, you know, um, instead of kids just going to DCF and sitting in a sterile office, you know, with someone pounding the foster parents, trying to place these kids and splitting up the siblings, they would go to this hazard house and get counseling and love and toys and, you know, and be well taken care of emotionally. And then, um, you know, and then, you know, you see where it goes from there, but at least it's a place where the cops know, don't call DCF, take them to the hazard house and they'll be taken good care of. Right. And so um, that's the kind of stuff or, you know, seeing people have breakthroughs in, um, in their business and overcoming trauma and overcoming, you know, past obstacles. That's what gets me emotional. Now, if I do, you know, if I do that particular thing, help people overcome their obstacles, then I should make money. Right. And so it's more of how do I impact more people? The money should come. And, and so, um, you know, I would just, uh, I would encourage you to, to just think about, okay, it may not be the next rank, right? Because it is probably, the next rank. It is well, the next rank. Part well, of it is that. You know what I'm saying? Like this is my comfort zone. I'm so not at the top I would, of the you know, the top of the rank. But I but I would argue that your next rank, if it really if that next rank was really meaningful to you, you would have hit it. And so I'm, I'm throwing out there that maybe there's something else kind of like me, like I was thinking about bank account and I was thinking about this and it really yeah. wasn't, it just wasn't jiving with me. It just like, yeah. whatever. Right. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't even log into the bank account. <laughs> like, you know, it's, I don't, that's just not what motivates me. Um, but I, but I should, if I show up enough, money should come. I should get more clients. I should get more customers, yeah. you know, et cetera. And so one thing that, really good network marketers that I've seen over the years. One thing they're really good at is um, time management within their story. Okay. So you don't ever, and I, and I would suggest against, you don't ever have to tell someone you've been in the industry 29 years. 
right now now you're amongst friends here right. right so like if you're in a network marketing scenario then sure you know that's that's kind of an honoring of the profession and a you know showing of the colors and the flag and you know that's that's a good thing but if i'm talking to a stranger i'm like you know hey listen um you know i was looking for something to replace my job because i was sick and tired of my job and i was sick and tired of not being able to raise my kids and you know so i found this thing and it, it's been helping me do that I don't have to say 29 years because right. I think 29 years is where you may be getting people disjointed of, do you even Completely. remember what it's like? Completely. You know? And they think that like, oh, no wonder, no wonder right. you made it, but I couldn't make it because I'm starting now. That's a very right. good point, Ray. Right. And so I would just, you know, what, I mean, just, just thinking about, you know, how many, how many, so if we if we back all the way out and I don't know, you know, you you have to tie this to your beliefs, of course. But um, I believe that a lot of our problems are um, because the parents are too damn busy like that. I believe a lot of the problems of the world are that the parents are just too damn busy. They're working too many jobs or they're away from home or, or whatever. Yeah. And I just I just think about, you know, your story and how many moms could you help? see the light and see that there's possibility for them to, you know, to work from home, to spend more time with the kids or raise their kids the way that you did. And so you pick and choose, you know, what you say. So, and, I'll, and, and there's so many nuances, like, um, not that they ever listened to me, but when I recruited doctors, I would tell them, don't, if you're talking to a stranger, don't tell them you're a doctor, tell them you work at a hospital. Yeah. They'll never suspect you're a doctor, right? You know, now they never listened to me and they needed their, you know, kudos. But um, but there are certain things like, you know, I remember hearing, I, I won't name them, but I remember hearing in my first company, you would think that this guy was a long haired, you know, uh, surfer two years ago. Well, it turns out that was 30 years ago. Interesting. You know, and, he, and he talks, and, and, but the way he told it, you're like, dang, man. That must it sounds like it wasn't that long ago. Like how long how long ago was it? And so you like really relate with that and you're like, damn, that's amazing. He's doing so good, you know? Yeah. And so I would not lie, but I would manage the time around your story and you don't, you know, leave out certain things. So one little thing with me is I say I lost it all in real estate. I actually don't typically say I was a real estate investor. Because uh -huh. most most people are like, oh, investor, oh, he had money. Well, yeah. the truth is, I didn't have money really. I was pulling equity out of my house in an inflated market, right. so it's just funny money, you know. Right. And but people just that word investor, oh, oh, he's different. So yeah. I want to identify every piece of my story that makes people think I'm different and I don't understand them. And and so I would talk about it. I lost it on real estate, and you know my credit was shot, which is all of those things are true. And people can relate with them. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't tell them, hey, once upon a time, I was, you know, speaking on the road 22 days a month, Vegas, Chicago, Phoenix, Miami, LA, selling, you know, big ticket stuff. Like, I'm not going to say that because yeah. that may make me look important, right? But it doesn't make them relate with me. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So good, Ray. So good because I feel like it was so long ago that yeah. I'm actually making the story yeah. feel so long ago to them too, so that they can't. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I, I would, it. I would use, I would use, you know, phrases like, Hey, listen, I, you know, I understand. I mean, I remember when I was grinding away at corporate world, I'm not saying a time, I'm not right. saying how long ago, I'm not saying yeah. what year, right? That I had a beehive right. or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, not that long ago. <laughs> um, but um, but I must say, man, I remember exactly how it was and just going into rush hour, coming home, the kids want to play, I'm tired and, and I just hated it. And so, you know, I was, you know, I, you know, met someone that introduced me to this thing and it's been able to, to, to be raising my kids. Yeah. And, and so like, I would just really scrutinize, is there anything that I'm saying for credibility reasons? Because here's how network marketers become, um, almost like, um, there's probably a better term, but they almost become like battered. Okay. Because yes. like a network marketer is beat up all the time and you want to say, listen, listen, M and F, I've been doing it 29 years. You know, like you want to, you want to flex on them, right? You want to say, I make a lot of money, 
you know, and and you want to you want to flex on them because they're being right. skeptical and cynical. But right. when we flex, now they can't relate. Right. And so instead of uh, impressiveness, it's relatedness. Yeah. So yeah. you know, when people hear that I don't, you know, hey man, you know, I if someone says I don't know that I can do it, I might say. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't finish high school on time. I never finished college. Um, you know, I'm someone that didn't have the greatest childhood. Parents were divorced pretty early and I wasn't sure I could do it either, to be honest. And all I did was I followed the system. I just listened. I showed up. I plugged in and, you know, it wasn't easy going at first. But, you know, I just kept following the system and it, and it worked out. And I remember I'll give you one last story. Then I'll, I've been doing all the talking here. But um, I remember being at uh, Blue Martini in uh, Naples, and uh, I'm you know I'm up at the bar and I'm I'm talking to this guy and I'm like uh, he was um, I think he was a realtor I think almost everyone is right but um, I think he was a realtor and I uh, I said hey man you know we got to chat and I don't remember about what but I said hey man you know um, I'm working on a side project I'm always looking for sharp people to talk to yeah I'd love to grab your card or something and you know, I'm here with a group so you know. I, you know, can't really talk too much, but I'd love to follow up with you and see if it's something that, you know, you'd be open to make some extra money. And he's like, okay, you know, and so he, you know, got me his card and I followed up with him and uh, got him on a presentation. I didn't present because I Uh didn't, I just, I wanted, I would sacrifice a little bit of conversion for more duplication. Right. And so because I was trained in sales hardcore, I can make a persuasive presentation, but they probably can't. So I'd rather have them watch a, a video or something, maybe not as converting, but duplicatable. Because I'll say, hey, by the way, all I do is show this video and that's all you would do. And I'm like, all I do is get people to watch this video. Yes. And so I follow up with him, get him on a video and he joins. Well, next month he was, um, he came to the company event. And so at that particular company event, I earned a, a BMW 7 Series. And so... <laughs> He came, I, I saw him, I'm like, oh, hey. And he comes rushing over and he's like, dude, you're the number one income earner. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, why didn't you tell me that? Like lead with that. I'm like, well, the reason I didn't tell you that is because you can't say that. See what I mean? Right. Yeah. He can't say that. I can't say oh, I'm the number one earner in this thing. I said side yeah. project. I do it on the yeah. side. You know, like that's, that's something funny. anyone can relate to. And right. here's a video. This is the video you would use. And yeah. then he shows up at the event and no one will ever be mad at you for under credibility. Yeah. Like if you play yourself down, no one's going to be like, oh, you big liar. Hate you. <laughs> like no one's ever, no one's ever going to hate on you yeah. for not tooting your own horn. It's when you do when you over toot your horn. That's when they're like, oh boy, you know? And so like, I would just, what am I saying that they can say or they can relate to? And am I saying anything that they cannot say? And so like, you know, I never was a check shower, you know, like I I know guys that they have this little notebook and they're like, see, look, it works. And they should literally show their checks. It totally gets a compliance and not smart. But the re the, the psychological reason I hate that, not just because it's not, you know, ethical, but the psychological reason is they can't do that. Yeah. They have no checks to show. Like just, I, I just don't like the, the psychology of it. And so um, what, what's your take on that? On, on all of this, I should say. Yeah, no, first of all, I love it. Um, it's such a good point because it's not only, it's not even that I say that, it's that I feel that. So removed from it, that they must not feel that they could do what I do. And so I think that's causing a disconnect, even though I'm focusing on serving them and I see what they are capable of, it takes a long time for them to get to know, like I'm lengthening the process. Like once people get to know me, they're like, oh my God, I I get you, you're amazing. I'm so glad, but it's not enough people I'm relatable to and um, fast enough. So I think that's a very valid point that I need to just stay in the place of where I was and the shoes that I walked in and how it changed my life. And forget about my life for one second. It changed my kids' life because they're crushed in business because they watched me. They heard me. 
Like yeah. when my daughter was 16 years old, she did my opportunity meeting for 200 people. And she, wow. how did she do that? She just heard me over and over and over again. That's awesome. So he is a, you know, like people don't realize the impact it can have on their children. Forget about your immediate, like you're changing generations of yeah. who your children are going to show up as. Like your kids are going to be like incredible entrepreneurs, business, because they watch their mom and dad. Yeah. Well, take, take, take that passion and know yeah. that literally every person you talk to is like that. And then one last thing, I, I kind of said it in my blue martini story, but I would tell people you do this on the side. And, you know, so I told people I did this on the side when I was the number one earner of the company. <laughs> and because, and so like, if anyone ever asked like, well, what do you do full time? You know, I said, oh, you know, I'm a full time dad, but I do this on the side. And so again, I'm playing myself down. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, puffing myself up. And so like with you, if it's full, maybe full-time yoga, I don't know what you do, but you know, it's, I would, you full say, <laughs> so like, you know, full, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, but yeah. I just, there's just much more power, I think, in saying, um, I do this on the side, I do this part-time because yeah. some people, as soon as you say full-time, they say, oh, I can never do it. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no wonder you're successful. You're full time. Yeah. If I if I could go full time, which I can't, yeah. then yeah, I'd be good, too. Yeah. Which is baloney. But I do this on the side. Yeah. And so no one will ever be like, really? Like, how, how do you fit this in? I just well, I show this video to people and I do a certain number every every week. And, you know, some say yes, some say no. And and so like, but tap, but tap into the passion that you have. I think what really is going to drive you is the passion, like when you lit up about your kids yeah. and just start thinking about all the kids you're going to impact. Like if you can just get more, you know, moms staying at home and, and, you know, if that's what they want, obviously not that, you know, they have to or whatever, but like, if you can just get more parents free where they're able to spend more time with their kids, able to, you know, show them, you know, really cool stuff and, and business skills, et cetera, then you're, you're helping to change the world for sure. And so that's what I would tap into. And so I, I does that help? Yeah, so much. Awesome. Awesome. That was, that was amazing. Very cool. I so appreciate it. Well I'm, well, I'm rooting for you. 29 years, you're starting all over. It's going to be amazing. You're going to crush that next rank. But you don't but you don't have to think about that next rank. Think about all the kids. And you I, I really believe you'll naturally hit that rank. I really do. Thank so, you. Appreciate all it. All right. Right. Jamie, everybody, give her some love, drop some comments, feel free to share this. And uh, I appreciate you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, right. Thanks down. I'll, you I'll see you in the too. group. You can find more great marketing, prospecting, and recruiting tips just like these over at rayhigdon.com. And remember to pick up your free copy of his 29 sources of network marketing leads. We'll see you over there.